My name is Alex DePinto. I'm a senior research fellow at the International Food Policy Research Institute, and I'm a coordinator of the research on climate change that happens here at IFPRI. Agriculture actually has this special uh, sort of double role. So it causes the problem. In fact, it's responsible for about 30% of greenhouse gas emissions. And at the same time, it's part of the solution. It has to be part of the solution because whatever changes you might make in order to reduce those emissions, those policies will have an effect on our capacity to produce food. When we intervene on emission reductions, we are changing the global environment. We're changing, essentially, we're changing prices of agricultural commodities, of food stuff. This has implications for food security. So it should not be surprising that bringing agriculture into the negotiations for the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions has been a difficult task. The good news is that there are plenty of opportunities for achieving both our food security goals and reduction of emissions from the agricultural sector. This can be done with a more efficient use of inputs and a more careful use of the natural resource base. We uh, have the capacity to evaluate what are the potential changes that are caused by climate change in terms of changes in yields and global prices. We can assess what alternative plants globally, so interventions in terms of investing in adaptation, what that would mean in terms of reducing those negative effects of climate change. So that is a global level. And then we can zero in countries and evaluate alternative policies and alternative targets and how those policies and, and alternative targets can deliver on multiple dimensions, meaning economic growth, reduction of emissions, and adaptation. And then we also have research that looks at at farmers and households, and what kind of practices would be more beneficial for them to adapt to a changing climate, but also what kind of barriers they are facing to adopt these alternative practices. At this point, we have developed, I think, enough tools to provide advice and guidance to policymakers, decision makers, even local communities in terms of what can be done in terms of to ensure development while at the same time taking care of our environment. This is the, the new frontier of our research, is this connection between country level planning and local communities. And understanding how ones might set the goals and how the local communities can implement and achieve those goals with their own set of desires, preferences, and needs. And it's just through the connection, developing a connection between this larger macro level of decision making and this localized level of implementation is by creating that connection that we can understand what is really feasible.